Welcome to Cole's Kitchen. Today on the show, we'll be discussing the consumption of poisonous shark meat. Hakarl, as fermented Greenland shark is known, was discovered by the Vikings many centuries ago. The Greenland shark is widely known for its poisonous skin, which contains ammonia, urea, and trimethylamine oxide, or TMAO. If the shark is consumed raw, it can cause an extremely drunken euphoria. However, the Vikings of Iceland determined how to safely prepare the shark for consumption many centuries ago through the process of fermentation. My curiosity got the best of me, and I set out to figure out the natural chemistry that makes the consumption of this toxic shark possible. The principles of fermentation are truly astounding. Fermentation is essentially the conversion of one nutrient into another nutrient by a living organism. This is obviously very surface level, so I will detail acid fermentation, which is relevant to the production of lactic acid, a process that frequently occurs in the human body during exercise. Acid fermentation occurs in the presence of glucose and involves a process called glycolysis. Essentially, glucose, a sugar originating from plants during photosynthesis and carried in animals' bloodstreams, reacts with NAD plus and ADP to produce pyruvate, and and a reduced NADH molecule. In the absence of oxygen, this pyruvate reacts with NADH to form NAD+, and the cycle of glycolysis continues with the reaction of pyruvate to form lactate, and finally, lactic acid. While this process may seem complex, and it is, essentially sugar or carbohydrates are being turned into acids and other nutrients through a series of chemical reactions. Fermentation is a chemical reaction that can be accomplished through three different organisms, bacteria, yeasts, and molds. Bacterial fermentation allows the conversion of carbohydrates to a lactic acid or carbohydrates to acetic acid. Yeasts are used to produce CO2 and ethanol. CO2 allows bread to rise and creates the bubbles present in beers. Yeast is used in brewing and also allows grain mash to ferment into beer. Finally, different types of mold are used to flavor cheese and soy, but require oxygen to grow. In general, these three organisms change the flavor profile of a food and increase the shelf life through the conversion of carbohydrates or other nutrients into acid. This process increases the longevity of the fermented product. There are two phases of fermentation and preservation in the process of creating hakarl. The first phase is the bacterial conversion of ammonia to non-toxic nitrogen compounds like the natural nit nitrogen cycle that occurs in soil. In this process, nitrates and ammonium are converted into nitrogen gas and the cycle repeats itself. This cycle is relevant to our fermentation process because the bacteria that cause fermentation convert the nitrogen-rich ammonia into harmless nitrogen gas, the gas that makes up a majority of our atmosphere. The second phase, which is simultaneous to the first phase, the fermentation of the shark, is the drying of the shark meat due to pressure and the dry sand around it, essentially drawing water out of the shark and lowering its water activity. This reduction in water activity also serves to halt the fermentation process because it kills the bacteria that ferment the shark. Oddly enough, the bacteria contribute to the, their own demise by producing lactic acid that drives down the water activity of the shark as well. The bacteria progressively make their environment more inhospitable through the fermentation process. In the case of the Icelandic Vikings, the head of the shark was removed and its body buried in a shallow grave, which was covered with sand, gravel, and stones. This hole allowed a few natural processes to occur. The bacteria in the hole ferments the shark's muscle and skin over the course of up to five months. This fermentation actually neutralizes the deadly toxins contained in the shark's skin, including TMAO, urea, and ammonia. The weight of the stones and gravel placed on top of the shark also forces fluid out of the shark and decreases the amount of water within the shark. This decrease in the activity of water makes it harder for bacteria and mold to grow on the carcass and increases the useful life of the shark meat. 
Fermentation allowed the Vikings to neutralize deadly toxins within the shark's skin and meat, while also increasing the longevity of the shark meat by burying it underground and decreasing the activity of water within the shark meat. While the process of making hakarl is fascinating, the flavor and culinary experience is another story. Its pungent odor often causes nausea and is said to smell like urine. This food is often touted as the worst smelling food in the world. While the taste is somewhat sweet, it is hard for many, including Gordon Ramsay, to overcome the nausea to enjoy this treat. Nonetheless, fermentation of fish and sharks is a widely used food preparation technique in cultures across the world, ranging from Iceland to Japan and many places in between. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of Cole's Kitchen. Come back next week where I'll teach you how to cook cookies on your dashboard.